Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about MTG Finance off the Pro Tour and a few speculations that finally have come around. And first of all, I'm going to talk about Crackling Doom. Crackling Doom, I have a binder here somewhere of uh, Crackling Dooms, Crackling Dooms, Crackling Dooms, Crackling Dooms, um, some Bussanos too, and Yes, as well as a stack of Crackling Dooms somewhere. I don't know what my stack of Crackling Dooms are. I guess, oh, that's right. Yep, and uh, Crackling Doom. So Crackling Doom, definitely a card that if you watched my previous videos, I, I liked a lot. The upside is, however, limited because it's in Kanja Tarkir. Kanja Tarkir being a heavily printed set makes it, you know, not, it's not going to spike to $10 ever, but I purchased it at 80 cents and now it's $3 in trade. So I'm very, very happy to trade them away into cards that I actually want. Now, the second card I want to talk about is Lily Honor. Now, if you follow this channel again, you realize that I play her in any deck I can play her in and I play four of her and it, she's not good. Or well, turns out, Blue Black Aristocrats is very, very fun. Um, that is the deck, although it did not top eight, that is the deck most people are excited to play with. Um, and why not? I mean, it looks like the funnest deck out there. Aristocrats has always been a very popular deck. So she went from $15 to $20 to $25 to $30, essentially almost doubling overnight. Foil copies have increased in price as well because you know they're aristocrats, right? So they need to foil themselves out. I mean, this sounds very ridiculous when I say that, but typically aristocrats players like to have foil Lilianas or foil cards that they play with. That's just who they are. And you can tell from the deck title name. So Liliana and foil, that has turned out to be excellent. Uh, definitely no complaints there. Anna Feza is a seven to eight dollar card now which is crazy to me um because what's he at like six to eight she's six to eight dollars right now and i still remember her being uh w during release and during um all of the talk about her not being good enough and uh, you had a lot of other cards in the free slot that you would play over anna Fezer. But very, very powerful card. And finally, finally, she has doubled in price since I told her you to buy it, her. And I just like her a lot. I've always liked Anna Fezer. So it's nice to see that. Um, and then last one, Gideon. Gideon I ranked as my number one planeswalker. Uh, back in that day, you could buy Gideon for $22. I think you can trade for him easily at $22. $25 uh, is the highest I remember him seeing him at. Now he's $40. He's around $38, $40. He's a real deal. Um, when I looked at him and I looked, you know, Ab, OB, and then Kiora. Kiora, first of all, saw almost no play at all on the top tables. OB saw a little bit of play in the control. I know uh, Reed Duke was playing him, but Gideon, that's the real playing Walker. That's the real deal. And I don't I'm not surprised to see him that high. I think he's going to fall, but beginning at 25, at 40, if you can flip him, and as you can tell from my other uh, channel with the lots of booster packs being open, I think it was like 782 booster packs, that, were, that had 11 Gideons on top of the four already pulled by my friend. So he had 15 Gideons. He's doing pretty well, and I, I think I told him to keep the Gideons. Um, the Gideons definitely were my pick for a card that is a high price card and a high risk card but could go up so pretty good a crackling doom very happy to see that one that video i took a look at the videos in october 2014 so almost almost a year ago uh, i made that video about crackling doom and finally it tripled in price it quadrupled in price which is fantastic i want a card quadruples in price that's going to do that's going to free up a lot of well, first of all, no one wanted Crackling Doom. Now people will want Crackling Doom. So I'll be able to trade them away in play sets for maybe Shocklands or uh, Fetchlands if I can trade them and give other stuff with it. So Crackling Doom was very, very good. Liliana, 
from a non-MTG finance, you know I play her in every deck. Like, if you watch this channel, you know, like, she's a sideboard card, or, you know, black-white tokens, abs in control, abs in, uh, obviously, I'm going to play Aristocrats now, because that's the deck that can use her, and I've been wanting to play with her in a deck for a very long time. Gideon, real deal. Um, he's He looks fantastic. His abilities are incredible for a Planeswalker. Not very much I need to say about Gideon, except that he, you know, he is a real deal and he has dominated a lot of top tables. And of course, Princess Anna Feza. Uh, Anna Feza being absolutely boss. Um, she is very, very good. And now I'm, I'm glad that people are seeing uh, her for, you know, she's a 4-4 with a upside. And that's when you look at a card like that you can't really go wrong. So those are four cards that I saw at the PT that have gone up in price. Some of them have quadrupled, some of them have doubled, but they have done, all of them have done extremely well. So it, it kind of reminds me that if something like a Crackling Doom, yeah, you do have speculations like a troll or something, you just can't hang on to it. But a Crackling Doom, that took over, almost a year for it to really go up in price. But when it did go up, it tripled or quadrupled in price and Liliana a card that I have loved for the longest amount and Anna Fezzer, those two cards I've loved and I've played in every deck if you watch this channel you know I put them in every single deck even if sometimes it makes no sense to have those cards in a deck I'm really glad to find to see that Anna Fezzer is now the cemented in Abzan uh, and instead of being an Abzan control type of deck and having to compete against Raptors and uh, the Undergrowth Champion and stuff like that, she now has a very clean place in Abs and Control, uh, Abs and Aggro, and Abs and Control is a little more aggro now, as well as I think my favorite breakout card was Liliana, um, really fantastic card. She found a home, and it took a while, and it took a deck that I never expected would be played, but she has a home, and her price is exactly where. I've always imagined it would be. Anyway, uh, leave a comment below if there were some cards you saw. Uh, obviously, I picked the top four that were a personal interest to me, or you know, what cards do you think that will go up in price in the future? So leave a comment below. Bye, guys.